This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning. And welcome to morning prayers from St. Peter's Ipsley this Monday morning. My name is Peter McLaren and I'm a licensed lay minister or reader in this parish. And you're welcome even if you are from far away looking in on this just as much as if you're a local member of the parish. So first of all, some opening thoughts from prayer during the day on Monday. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and mine. Redeemer. Now our psalm today is going to be Psalm 90, 96 and I'm going to read it from the Daily Prayer Common Worship Book and as I read it you'll find one or two phrases very familiar. It contains the sentence, O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, which when many of you will know as the start of a hymn. And notice too as I read it, the psalm can be thought as having three parts, each starting with a verb. Sing, ascribe, and tell. So let me read you this song. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. For the gods of the nations are but idols. It is the Lord who made the heavens. Honour and majesty are before him. Power and splendour are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honour and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it among the nations that the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the fields be joyful and all that is in them. Let all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. With righteousness he will judge the world and the people with his truth. And the refrain that's given at the end of the psalm in the prayer book, I'm sure we all know. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Now, the Psalms, as you know, have different themes. Some are sorrowful, some are Psalms of great praise. 
Some are royal psalms, psalms for every condition. And this psalm is just a certain psalm of praise, just what we need for a Monday morning. And as I read the first section, I noticed the following. I wonder what you noticed. First of all, the universality of the call to praise. It doesn't say, sing to the Lord, all you people of Israel. It says, sing to the Lord, all the earth. And then it says, declare his glory among the nations. In verse 3, and the word nations is usually used for non-Jewish people. So here is a command to praise for all people, and especially for God's people, to praise all who we meet on this earth. And it says again, declare his wonders among all peoples. You know, peoples is plural. And it gives me the implication that the psalmist is referring to all groups of people. None are excluded. All nations, all languages all tribes, groups of people. The psalm then goes on to describe two ways in which we are to praise and worship. Verse 2 says, Sing to the Lord and bless his name. The original idea has got the has got the idea of kneeling before God, our Creator and Lord, and to do it every day. We should not just be blessing the Lord every Sunday, but blessing God every day. And again, we are to sing his salvation from day to day and declare his glory among the nations. This should be a public act, declaring his glory and his wonders among all people. Not just a private act at home, but declaring God's glory publicly when we meet friends and neighbours, and even strangers. You know, I have to ask myself, did I adequately tell a, of God's glory among the people of Romania I met this week, as well as those I met from Sudan, Syria, and the Gambia? In my day-to-day -day life, I meet many people from the nations. Who are you, Jew, to make God's glory known to? And then why should we praise God in this way before all people? Verse 4 says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. God's innate greatness should make us give him praise. No, great praise. Don't be stinting in your praise of God. For all he's done in creation and especially all he's done in Christ. And that's something that we will be particularly remembering in the next weeks as we come to our season 
of Advent. But there's a contrast here. God should be revered more than all other gods, whether they're the multiple gods of Hinduism or the European gods of money, sport, international football, or fame today. Putting it bluntly, the psalmist says, the gods of the nations are just humanly constructed idols. But it's the Lord himself who created the universe. What a comparison between the human construct that many worship today and the Lord of glory who made the heavens. And just look at the words that describe God in verse 6. Honour, majesty, power, splendour. Let's use great terms when we praise our great God. Now there are two other verbs that start the other sections ascribe to the Lord, that means speak about his characteristics and tell, again, tell out among the nations. There's a further command and instruction there for us all to tell out God's glory. But I'll leave you to look at that for yourself today. Yes, you can read Psalm 96 and see what extra truths you can find there. But there is just one more thing I noticed about this psalm. Now, some of you listening to these prayers may remember the sermon I preached on Remembrance Sunday when I said the words in Micah chapter 4 about beating swords into plowshares were identical to the words in Isaiah chapter 2. Now, actually, the same truth is true about this psalm. The words here are very similar to those in 1 Chronicles 16, where David had brought the Ark of God up to Jerusalem, and he ordered the temple orchestra to play so that people could thank and praise the Lord, the God of Israel. That's in 1 Chronicles 16.4. And special mention is also made of Asaph, the leader of the music group, who was to play the music on the cymbals. So no doubt there was a good beat there. Yes, let us, in our private and public worship, Praise the Lord regularly as well and praise him among the nations. Amen. We're now going to hear one of the great New Testament songs of praise spoken by Zechariah after the birth of his son, John who we know with the title John the Baptist. It is called the Benedictus. And this is a song that Zechariah first sung after he'd been released from being dumb for 10 months. He says this, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He's raised up for us a mighty saviour, born in the house of the servant David. 
through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And referring to his son, John, Zechariah goes on to say, and you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. So we can all say, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We come now to our time of prayer. And let's remember those we know who are unwell at this time. O oh Lord, we bring to you our relatives, our friends, our church members who have long-term sickness at this time. And some of them cannot attend your house of worship at this time. We bring them to you, O oh Lord, as we bring to you our friends who are struggling with men mental health issues at this time. We bring to you also those we know and love who live in foreign countries, who are in need of you and those who we cannot see because of the distances involved. We bring to you those who mourn, especially Dave and his family at this time, and some who we know who are still mourning a loss from many years ago. And we ask your blessing on them in the name of the healing Christ. And we will now have a period of silence where we remember those before God who we especially need to remember at this time. And I will be remembering L at this time. So, Lord, bless those we've prayed for today. But let us also remember thanksgiving, those who have seen God's healing grace at this time. And I will specially be remembering with thanks God's blessing on H at this time. And we give thanks for God's healing grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. We pray too for the nations 
that are in turmoil at this time. We remember those in Ukraine and give thanks for those who provided accommodation in this country for those who've had to flee from that country. May all know the love of Christ at this time. We also pray for those nations hit by bad weather, those in Pakistan who are recovering from excessive monsoon season, those who have not had enough rain for their crops, those who have been made homeless and lost possessions, either through too much heat or too much rain. May relief be speedily provided by the leadership in these countries and the international community. And show us, O oh Lord, where you would want us individually to help those in need. So be the healer of nations as well as the healer of individuals. O oh Lord, we pray. Amen. And we have now the special prayer for this week. The prayer for the second Sunday before Advent. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him, in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And a special prayer set for today in prayers during the day on Monday. And this is a very old prayer composed by an Archbishop of York, Alchin, in the year 800. Eternal light, shine into our hearts. Eternal goodness, deliver us from evil. Eternal power, be our support. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal pity, have mercy upon us, that with all our heart and mind and soul and strength, we may seek your face and be brought by your infinite mercy to your holy presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's join together in the family prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Emerembi, nemerembi, forever and ever. Amen. And yes, that last bit was in an African language. I know a little bit of. So may the Lord bless and be with you this day. And may we meet again tomorrow.
tomorrow to hear God's word and to praise his name. Goodbye.